Thank you. Uh, so, uh, thanks a lot for the introduction. Uh, let me say a few words about myself. I'm a PhD student uh, uh, candidate at Imperial, but I'm also doing uh, security audits for ZK Security. My background is mainly from uh, programming languages, uh, computer security and privacy. But in the last uh, few years, I have been working mainly on blockchain security and especially smart contract security and lately on ZKP security, analyzing and benchmarking uh, various ZKP frameworks, etc. So, in this talk, I'm going to, talk, uh, to uh, present our latest work on zero knowledge proof vulnerabilities. And what does that mean? It means that when we use zero knowledge proof, some novel uh, is, uh, attacks might uh, happen. So, I will give a, a brief motivation, then, I will discuss our meta model for systems using uh, zero knowledge proofs. Then I will discuss very briefly the impact of those vulnerabilities. I will present a threat model, and then I will present the main body of our, of our work, which is a taxonomy for vulnerabilities in zero knowledge proofs. And finally, we will very briefly discuss defenses. So, what is the state of zero knowledge proofs? So, zero knowledge proof, for anyone that are not aware of them, are basically cryptographic protocols that allows to one party, the prover, to prove a statement to a verifier, potentially without revealing uh, almost uh, nothing about that statement. And that's the, what a zero-knowledge proof is. Uh, the main use case for zero-knowledge proofs, obviously, is to use a, a protocol that has the zero-knowledge property. We will define what that property means in a bit. And that means have, uh, having uh, the ability to perform uh, private transactions, etc. But now these zero knowledge proofs are mainly using uh, used for scalability. And what does it mean? It means that we have uh, some blockchains that we call them roll-up or L2 uh, blockchains. And in these blockchains, we perform the computation of chain, and then we submit to an L1 blockchain a validity proof about the transactions we computed in another auxiliary blockchain. And this is the main use, use of uh, uh, zero knowledge proofs at the moment. Uh, we also have Zcash, which is a layer one blockchain with uh, private transactions. We have Filecoin, Filecoin that heavily uses zero knowledge proofs, and we have some more applications. And despite that growing uh, number of uh, protocols and systems using them, we have not ob still observed an exploit a black hat exploit uh, of any of those protocols. But there have been some very critical vulnerabilities in those protocols. For example, Zcash had a bug that was in the uh, main de deployment of uh, Zcash for almost two years, and someone from inside detected that vulnerability and patched it. Tornado Cash had a very naive, I would say, vulnerability in one of the main uh, circuits, circuits are the zero knowledge proof programs, that's how we call them, uh, that was again detected by a white hat hacker and then it was exploited by the Tornado Cash uh, team. Then in one of those ZK rollups, uh, there was a critical vulnerability that basically if someone could exploit it, it could take all the TVL, all the uh, value locked in that uh, chain. And uh, lately, uh, one month ago, another vulnerability was detected in uh, a system that uh, is deployed, and that vulnerability was detected through an audit. So, a few very critical vulnerabilities have been detected in the systems, but none have been exploited. And the main reason why people believe uh, this is the case is because they argue that zero knowledge proofs are complex. Writing circuits, it's even more complex. And also, detecting vulnerabilities and perform attacks, it's even more complex. But we believe that with the recent de developments and uh, more and more people start using uh, zero knowledge proofs, writing circuits, etc., vulnerabilities wouldn't be that hard to be detected and exploited. For example, the ZCAS vulnerability was due to an issue in one of the underlying libraries they used. 
and uh, here is basically the program that was vulnerable. And the issue is in line 24, instead of using one symbol that means uh, assign a value and constraint, it only assigned that value. And that resulted to a vulnerability that if someone could have been exploited, would have been able to get all the money out of uh, Tornado Cast. So, uh, there has been some work into creating a taxonomy uh, for zero-knowledge proof uh, security issues. Uh, one initial effort was a bug tracker in GitHub by ZeroXPark, and also there have been, uh, some people have given uh, some presentations discussing taxonomies about uh, uh, zero-knowledge proofs. One was uh, from two, uh, 2022, another one in 2024. But there hasn't been like a systematic work into trying to better understand why we have those vulnerabilities and um, how to actually detect them. So we did that work. And uh, the first part is uh, to understand how systems using SNARKs and zero knowledge proof. So SNARKs is basically the most common zero knowledge proofs used uh, in practice uh, uh, today. So we start with a program. Um, here we call it R, but it could be whatever. And that program basically describes uh, our um, uh, what we want to prove, right? The computation that we want to prove uh, to some uh, verifier. And that program takes some, some, in some public inputs and some private inputs. Then we need to manually translate that program and write a circuit. Typically, we write circuits in domain-specific languages for SNARKs. Some uh, examples are uh, Hello2, uh, Circom, Noir, and uh, many more. There are many, many DSLs uh, today for writing SNARKs. And uh, in those circuits, we have to both define how to compute some values from some inputs, but also we have to constrain that computations to only accept uh, the correct computation. And you can imagine that as putting assert statements in your code. And the computation part is performed by the prover, and uh, the um, uh, verification part, the assertions, are being evaluated by, by a verifier. And then we have what we call uh, the front end, which basically takes as input uh, the circuit and compiles down to two things. One is a, an intermediate representation that it's going to be used as the input for our backend. And the other one is a witness generator, which basically takes the public and the private input, runs the computational logic from the circuit, and creates a trace with all the intermediate, uh, all the intermediate values and the final outputs of the circuit. Then we have the backend. The backend is composed of uh, three functions. The setup function, it takes some common reference string. We don't care in that work about that. And uh, also it takes as input uh, the intermediate representation produced by the compiler. And then in that function, we create two keys. And that function is also called basically pre-processing. We create two keys, a prover key and uh, a verifier key. And then we have two other functions. Prover takes as input the trace generated by the witness uh, generator and the prover key, and it creates a proof. And then the verifier takes as input only the public parts of our trace, and because of the zero knowledge property, some parts can be uh, private. And it also takes the proof and the verification key, and then it just outputs uh, true or false if the proof uh, can be verified. And finally, we have uh, the application layer, which is basically the layer where we are interacting with uh, the, zero, the SNARK. And you can imagine that layer being a smart contract that calls on-chain uh, uh, on chain verifier uh, to uh, see if a proof is correct or not. And uh, another example for the integration layer could be some code that uh, calls the prover, etc. Recently, there have been some uh, uh, novel uh, frameworks called ZKVMs that basically abstract away the uh, circuit part. So instead of writing zero, uh, ZKP circuits, 
you can just provide your program to that uh, VM and everything else will work uh, similar as before. We can also imagine uh, and think about uh, those layers in a hierarchy uh, where we have uh, on the bottom level the hardware, our runtime, etc. Then we have the proof system, which is basically the technical aspect, the theory for uh, the SNARK and the zero knowledge proofs. On top of that, we need some very optimized uh, field arithmetic and elliptic curve libraries. And then we have the front and the back end, the circuit, and the application. And uh, any vulnerability in any of the lower uh, levels it means that basically everything that has been built up, uh, upon that layer can be broken. And in that work, we exclude uh, the non-ZKP related uh, vulnerabilities uh, layers. Uh, so what are the main properties we care about in general proofs? Are knowledge soundness, which means that a dishonest prover cannot convince a verifier of an invalid statement, except with a negligible uh, probability. The second property is that an honest prover can always convince an honest verifier of the correctness of a valid statement. So the verifier won't accept um, valid proofs if I am managed to create a valid proof. And third, the zero knowledge means that we cannot uh, get any private information from the proof. So our thread model has three main adversaries. The first one is the network adversary, which basically observes uh, all the public messages that have been, that have been exchanged. And he cannot uh, interact uh, with uh, neither the prover or the verifier. Maybe he can extract some value if the zero knowledge property, uh, some private information, if the zero knowledge property is broken. Then we have the adversarial user, which is a user that does not have proving cap capabilities. So it has to use a prover to generate a proof, but otherwise it can provide any input to the prover. And we have the adversarial prover, which is our main thread model, which means that a prover has the ability to arbitrary, arbitrarily produce a proof. And uh, if the verifier is buggy, then it can break the soundness of uh, our system. In our paper, we also explain a bit more about those adversarial roles and its capability uh, that uh, any adversary can have. Okay, then what can go wrong? First, we can have a vulnerability that breaks the soundness of uh, the zero knowledge proof. And what does that mean? It means that a prover can convince a verifier of a false statement. Imagine the simplest example that we have a circuit that proves that A plus B equals C. And uh, in that case, the verifier could uh, convince, uh, the prover could convince the verifier that one plus one equals five, which is wrong. And that means that it breaks the sound. Then we have breaking of completeness, which means that we either cannot produce a valid proof for some valid statement or the verifier will reject some valid proofs. And finally, we, we can have a breaking of zero knowledge, which means that we have information leakage about the private parts of the trace. So, uh, in our work, we analyzed 141 uh, vulnerabilities from either audit reports or vulnerability disclosures or from uh, bug trackers. We focused only into critical uh, security vulnerabilities. We did not consider any non-ZKP related vulnerabilities. And uh, here is a table presenting uh, the main results. Uh, so uh, we categorize the vulnerabilities based on uh, the layer and on the impact. And uh, the main um, impact is soundness bugs, which is the worst thing that can happen into an application that uses zero knowledge proofs. And also the most vulnerabilities are in the circuit layer. That could be because most of the effort is towards the circuit layer, but also it could be uh, because of the different model that we have in the circuits. And what I mean by different model is when you write a circuit, you have to have two things in your mind. First, the computation part. And in that example, we have um, th uh, two input variables, two temporary variables, and one output variable. 
So when you write the circuit, you have to define the computation logic, how uh, you compute temp uh, temporary variable three, temporary variable four, and output five. But also, you have to constrain your computations. And uh, by constraining, I mean what should be the value of temporary variable three, what should be the, variable, uh, the value of temporary variable four, and what should be the uh, output uh, of the output variable. And uh, this is a bit tricky and different than normal programming. And we believe that, and from our results, um, we come to the conclusion that this is the main reason. The different mental model that uh, developers should have is the main reason why we have so many vulnerabilities in the circuit layer. You can also imagine that the computation part is what is executed by uh, the prover, and the constraints are what is checked by the verifier. So what can go wrong in the circuit layer is that we can have under-constrained vulnerabilities, we can have over-constrained vulnerabilities, and we can have computational uh, errors. Under-constrained means that somewhere we missed some constraint, so the prover can uh, produce proofs of invalid statements. Uh, Over-constrained, it means that we have more constraints than those that we wanted to add. And that means that uh, there could be some uh, issues where we cannot pr produce proof for st some statements. And computational is more on the logic side. So we have a variety of root causes. And uh, we have some tables in the paper that describe uh, how many bugs uh, uh, has led from each root cause. But what I want to focus here is that two are the main root causes that we identified uh, in the circuit layer. First is that in some cases, as many constraints as you have in your uh, circuit, that more expensive it will be to prove your circuit, uh, given some inputs. So people are, have been trying to do various optimizations in that level, and this is one of the main reasons why we have so many bugs. And those optimizations are pretty uh, complicated sometimes. And the second uh, reason is that typically we work on um, a field uh, when we're writing circuits. And uh, this is not the same field or the same integers that we have in our normal pro uh, uh, programs. And that also introduces some uh, vulnerabilities. Um, I have two examples here. I will skip them, but we have many examples in uh, our paper. So. Next, on the integration layer, four main things could go wrong. First is passing and check data to the circuit. And that could happen because sometimes in the circuit we have some assumptions that we expect our inputs to have specific values or to be under a specific range. And it is on the integration layer to check for those uh, assumptions. And in some cases, people forget about those assumptions because they are not that uh, well documented or because uh, it's a huge complicated system and they forgot something. Uh, and we also have proof delegation and proof composition errors, which has to do on how we use uh, the prover and also some of those applications, especially privacy related applications, have some complementary logic to the zero knowledge proofs and there can be some common vulnerabilities there. Uh, next, on the front end, uh, and on the back end, we can have a number of vulnerabilities. Um, we go into the detail into uh, the paper, but what I want you to get out of it is that if we have a front end vulnerability, then even if our circuit is correct, then maybe it could be exploited. And the same uh, stands for also back end vulnerabilities. Now, people have tried to create uh, security tools to detect those uh, vulnerabilities. Mainly, they have been focused into the circuit layer, but because of uh, uh, the complexity of those systems and also the number of DSLs we have, the results are not that great. So many of the vulnerabilities cannot be detected, and for some DSLs, we have basically no support from uh, security tools. And also, there hasn't been any effort on uh, front-end and on the back-end layers. Uh, on top of that, uh, what can go wrong is issues in the original descriptions 
of uh, the zero knowledge proofs in the original papers, and that could lead to various issues. And then everything built on top of, the, of uh, um, those proof systems will be uh, vulnerable. And uh, so, in conclusion, why do we have bugs in uh, zero knowledge proof, uh, in systems using zero knowledge proofs? First is because zero knowledge proofs are not just math, although they are based in very nice uh, maths. There could be bugs in the implementation that can break all the properties of the systems. And uh, the second one, the reason, here I have